Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Sergei Kolesov. He's based in Lyon, Lyon, France. Um, I do think, I think he is Russian. Um, he does have a YouTube channel, uh, an Instagram, I believe, as well, and a Patreon. So I will be linking all of his links in the description below. Um, I think he used to be called Peleng, P-E-L-E-N-G, but I think he does stick to his name um, now. He does have a very interesting portfolio in his art station. Um, I do find that most of his work is pretty conceptual where it's there's a lot of exaggeration in his work. I'm not sure how to classify that kind of art style or art category, but it works well for paintings. I mean, he has more paintings in his portfolio, but recently he's been focusing or trying, I guess, to go the editorial route with his illustrations where they are a bit more graphic and a bit more flat in terms of the the process, but they're still pretty conceptual. And I do think it fits both worlds. The It fits the editorial kind of illustration world and it fits the kind of concept art kind of um, world. Um, and I feel a lot, most of his portfolio is personal work, actually, which I find fascinating. Because um, it really shows you about what, it shows you what he, what he is kind of interested in and what his mentality is about. Um, and in that way, he can also, he, he can kind of show, not kind of, but he does obviously show his skill level when it comes to his illustration techniques. Because he can go for a very sketchy look and he can also go for a very refined kind of look. Uh, for example, this one. This is a very kind of high quality illustration. Um, this could be like a wallpaper, a screensaver for a game, for a, a book, or maybe a, a book cover or something. And it's pretty high quality. The way he renders um, is pretty realistic, but he does exaggerate uh, the figures a lot. Well, not just human figures, but it, it does depend on, I guess, his on the message he's trying to portray, but he does exaggerate a lot of things but the way he renders is still pretty realistic and it, it's it's kind of a nice combination actually um, now for this one it's more of a sketch but you can still see that conceptual side of it where he's kind of it's a monkey with a shoe for a head now I'm not sure what he's trying to say with that but you know I like it now this one's more of a uh, it's it's more graphical it feels like it's very shape heavy. Um, it, could, it could actually be like a, a frame for a comic book, a graphic novel, or maybe even like a keyframe for a film or something. But you know, he does exaggerate the, the facial. I mean, it's still pretty, pretty uh, realistic, but there's a bit of slight exaggeration there. Um, reminds me a bit of, at least for this piece, it reminds me a bit of Mikhail Mikhail. <laughs> Another, I, I think it's Russian as well, Mikhail Barulko. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because of the proportions of the figure. Where it's not... Uh, it's a bit... Pulled, in a way. Vertically, at least. Um, it's still pretty sketchy, but... There's a bit of composition going on in this photo, I guess. I'm not sure what this thing is. Is it a cow? Or a dog? Or a person? Um... But again, there's still that kind of messaging. Even though it's not finished, there's a message that's being portrayed. Now, this one does feel more like a keyframe for like a a film. It's more of a close-up shot of this guy leaving his car. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's still pretty sketchy, but it does have that graphical kind of look to it. Um, and it does say what it needs to um, say. You know, like it, it, it's, it makes sense. There's not much to it, obviously, but uh, it's there, so. Again, the style is pretty different, or it changes a lot, quickly. Now, this one's more realistic, the way it's rendered. He did focus more on this guy's face and chest. Uh, there's a bit more rendering. Um, and it does have that natural oil look to it. Um, so maybe it can start out like this, where it's a bit big, the brush strokes at least, and then eventually if he likes it, or if it needs to be kind of more rendered, um, he'll go in deeper and uh, render things out a bit more and make the brush size a bit smaller or kind of make the canvas image size way bigger, right? 
And you can s see in the bottom part of this alien creature thing, you can see more of the, the bigger brush strokes, right? And he does focus again more on this um, guy. So again, there is that kind of 10 to 20% area in the painting where the artist usually does focus. And he does the same thing where he doesn't have to render every single thing. Um, I, I, I would have assumed though that he... I mean, he could have just made the, the, the sky in the background kind of flat or almost like this. But he did kind of slightly render it a bit. Or, or at least you can see more smaller brush strokes. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but the anatomy is pretty realistic, but you can see he kind of pulled the um, the legs further down. He kind of elongated it, so there's a bit of exaggeration there. Now this one is more... it's kind of sharper, similar to this one, right? The edges, it's not that rendered, not a lot of soft um, edges. Reminds me a bit of Victor Hugo Hamatiuk. Um, he's a Brazilian concept artist. Um, I also did an art review of that guy and I do see a lot of sharpness in his work so again it does change, his style does change and you can see this kind of guy here. It's not that obvious if you kind of see it from afar but there's a guy obviously here and he's kind of piloting the shark. It feels like it's mechanical just because I can see a bit of reds here so maybe it's kind of a mech, a shark mech, a mech shark, a mark. Um, <clears throat> uh, again, another kind of frame, perhaps, of maybe this kid is lost and this guy kind of found her, right? And I see skulls, so maybe this is not good territory. Um, I do see him using a bit of blur in this area. And it does help make it look more like a keyframe for a film. And of course, I do notice a bit of noise that's added. Um, and it's pretty common to do that whenever you're doing kind of keyframe art. It does feel like a film grain kind of um, effect, right? I had a point. And yeah, whenever you're doing keyframes, I've seen keyframes where they're really high quality uh, renderings essentially, but you don't even have to go that far because essentially keyframe art is just colored storyboards essentially. Um, it helps to kind of get uh, get the mood. I mean, you can get the mood with just kind of a grayscale kind of painting, but you can kind of determine the colors um, in this stage, and because colors do help with the storytelling, right? It's not just about the values or the or the uh, the lighting. The colors can play a role in um, storytelling. Um, very very clear shapes here. Now this one is actually, it's hard to s tell what this thing is. I mean, this could be like a door, um, a set of stairs. I'm not sure what this whole thing is. Maybe I'm not seeing it right, but I like how he shows his messy kind of work, right? Because you can always kind of render things to this uh, level eventually if he needs to, but it doesn't have to go that far to be able to say something. Now, of course, in this case, it's kind of hard to see. Or oh shit, I can see something. Oh, I think these are pants, and this is kind of a shoe. So maybe there's a guy here. Fuck. Now this one is super rough. Uh, I feel like these are kids. I'm not sure what this thing is in the middle. Um, I see a lot of texture brushes being used there. Um, it's pretty common when starting out a painting, especially if you don't have like a clear idea of what you're trying to do. The the randomness of your strokes can actually elicit some kind of um, an interesting kind of idea, at least to start off with. Because you can always change things as you go, but it's a great way to start um, a painting, you know, just by putting in a bunch of random strokes and preferably trying to use a few texture brushes, just because you get more variation with using a texture brush, right? I do have this, um, or I do have a link for this specific piece. He does have a time lapse video um, for this painting in his YouTube channel. Um, I like how the everything else is pretty much messy, but he did focus his rendering more again on this special twenty percent of the painting, of the painting. Sorry. Um, 
So it's kind of a concept art research <laughs> thing. Um, and again, it, it, it's it's trying to say something, right? It's um, again, I, I wish I knew the word for this kind of art where you're not designing for a film, you're not designing for a game necessarily. It's just about the idea, you know. Um, and I like it. It kind of makes me, for example, right now, just seeing this painting, I feel like I can relate to this guy right here, the artist. And I'm sure you can relate to this guy as well, you know. And I like how everything is mostly dark. I mean, you can see a bit of light in the background, but... Um, seeing this kind of light here kind of shows that his world is just here, right? And it's pretty much... I think this is some kind of telescope or magnifying glass. Or microscope and it kind of focuses on the painting I think um, it's either about the artist or it's about the painting but I do feel it's more about the artist and his head like what the guy is kind of thinking about right um, and I do like paintings like this because it, it makes you think you know it makes you first it kind of brings you in because it's interesting it finds something for you to kind of put yourself in. In this case, it's this character right here. And it makes you ask questions. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. And again, his rendering style is pretty realistic, especially in this part. Um, now this one's pretty gritty. It reminds me of the work of Greg Rutkowski because he does a lot of this gritty kind of um, texture. Or he adds them at least in his work a lot. Um, Very, very graphical with this mechanical dog in the background. And we have an actual dog here. I'm not sure what this I believe this could be some kind of antenna. Or flower. Fuck. Um, Doctor Zero. Um, it actually looks it looks like an oil painting to me. Like a traditional oil painting. Now this one, I'm not sure what this thing in the background is. It could be like a bird. Some kind of creature. Maybe it's dead. Um, and you can see this kid kind of... Um, homeless, she's not wearing any shoes, her clothes are kind of broken apart, or torn apart, and maybe something just died, maybe her friend or her friend creature thing. Um, and again, it's trying to say something, it's a story, you know. Now here he does exaggerate things a bit more with this head, with this body, and I believe this is some kind of fish. I think he this piece is based off of the um, I don't know a, a koi pond or something because that's what it looks like to me. Um, I love how this whole thing is kind of split apart. This whole top part is kind of in shadow, and the bo bottom part is in um, obviously in light, right? And uh, again, he does exaggerate things with the shapes. He kind of pulls things. Um, Now, this one's actually a nice uh, dynamic shot. I mean, it's not super skewed, but you can see this slight kind of tilt, and it does make it a bit more interesting, right? And obviously, this train is kind of moving, so it does help add or contribute to that sense of movement. And obviously, he does blur things out. I believe motion blur. He, I think he did use motion blur in the, the edges of this um, composition. And look at how he mainly rendered the train, right? And everything else is kind of vague. Even these figures, this train right here, a very, very rough sketch, right? It's more about just, um, it's more gestural even. But he did render this um, front part of the train even more, right? Now, I'm not sure what this thing is. It could be some kind of creature or alien that's um, kind of walking around this cliffside. I like the way the clouds are painted though. It looks like an oil painting from this view. Right? Like a classical kind of oil painting. Um, I'm not sure if he does photo bash a lot. It's hard to say. I think he does mostly paint his work. Oh. And again, you can see the way he does like the form of this character here, it's very you can see it even in his editorial types of illustrations. Obviously the rendering style is a bit more flat. 
in his editorial artwork, but the way he does his forms is still there. Like he has a certain kind of design style. Um, and yeah, it does remind me of Mikhail Baruko. Um, I think Mikhail, hopefully I'm saying his name right, fuck. Um, I believe he was the first guy I did an art review of in this channel, so brings me back. Anyway, a very gouache-like kind of rendering style here. I mean, you can still see the, the, the brushiness of the strokes where it kind of fades out in some parts, but it's still pretty shape-heavy where it's not super blended, where the light, where you can see this kind of gradation of values and they're not exactly smooth. You know, they're a bit sharp in a way, right? Now this was this is a fish eel. Oh no, no well, not an eel because you can see like the fins, right? It's a fish. Um, I'm not sure what this thing is trying to say, but fish, right? I love the way it's painted though. Very very realistic. Oh, this is actually one of my favorite pieces of this. Um, it's kind of sad actually. Um, so there's this kind of. Uh, underwater creature and I think she just died and they're kind of reeling her in so that's kind of sad um, I'm not sure what it's trying I mean you can tell what it's trying to say here it's um, it's sad <laughs> you know maybe he did use like a photo texture for this part right here right and maybe uh, another texture to kind of overlay the whole thing you can see the, the kind of light blue parts here to kind of suggest some kind of movement in the water but uh, and you can see how this part of the arm is above the water and how the rest of it or the rest of her is kind of just dead and you can see even the blood um, I love it it makes me feel sad and I think it's it's a kind of artwork that um, makes me feel something it makes you think even a bit um, yeah, it's pretty depressing. So I think I'll move on. <laughs> but this could be like the cover, the co the cover, the cover for this um, or the thumbnail for this video, maybe. If it's not this, it's the um, this guy, because the concept art research thingy. So we have like an ostrich kind of creature here, um, being ridden by this desert dwelling fellow. It's a bit rough the way it's painted. I do like this. It's a pretty interesting kind of concept. Um, so we have an excavator kind of guy. First of all, the composition, the shot is kind of in portrait mode. Um, and it's interesting, but um, it's just not... I, 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 I think I'm just used to seeing kind of a 16 by 9 or any kind of longitudinal kind of shot. So whenever I see something like this, like a portrait mode type of um, uh, composition, it kind of throws me off. But uh, it still works, right? And look at how he kept the background very simple. Very, very it's, it, They're just a bunch of silhouettes. And they're not even that clean in terms of the edge. I think he did add a bit of a blur in the edges. And I like how it gets rougher in the, the lower parts of the painting. He obviously focused more on this part right here. And this guy is kind of... Um, this could be like a mummy or a statue. Kind of embedded in this... Um, in this rock formation and he's kind of spraying in the very you know yeah so it's kind of funny but it's pretty interesting right again you don't have to render everything look at how the rocks get less defined as you go further down and even here they're just a bunch of random strokes and here they're just a bunch of random texture strokes right where it's he's just trying to show the uh, the um this kind of sense of grittiness i guess but that's pretty much it and even for the, the values of this figure right here that's kind of in this rock formation i can see a bit of gray blue and the yellow not a lot of value variation it does feel more like a gouache kind of painting <laughs> kind of like uh uh this guy right especially this um character right here Now I can see a bird, um, it's tied up I guess, and someone is making out in the background. Or, or, or at least in this boat. Very very interesting. Um, 
Now this one's actually, uh, I'm not sure if this is for some kind of project or personal project maybe? I can't say. But I like the look of it. Now it's a bit more realistic. It's a bit stylized obviously but it's very very on the realistic side. Um, so there's this kind of, I'm not sure if she's part of a team or maybe she's an alien. And obviously, I'm not sure what these light figures are. Maybe she's kind of possessed. Or maybe she is an alien. Um, I like the way the, the environment is painted though. Maybe he did use a bit of photo textures for this uh, ground part right here. Um, but most of it, even the wiring, he doesn't overdo it. He just paints it, you know? And that's pretty cool. Now this one does feel more like a keyframe, but I believe this is also another personal project or personal work of this. Uh, so some kind of gang crime maybe? The guy's dead or bleeding, right? And uh, I'm not sure what this guy is. I do see cigarette, a cigarette, a bottle of alcohol perhaps. He's also holding one right here. Um, maybe it's because he's Russian. <laughs> I know it's a stereotype, you know, like Russian drink vodka or something. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like this concept. It's uh, it's a Mars rover kind of concept, and he added his own version right here, uh, where it's kind of an alien kind of looking version of this thing, right? And even the wheels are kind of um funny. Because they're not um, round, right? They're kind of blocky and squarish, triangular-ish even. And it's a, fun, it's a fun concept, right? And I like how this, his creation right here, fits the environment. Where it's not off, you can even see like a solid shadow. And it fits the environment as well. And even this thing, I think this is also painted... Uh, yeah, he, he painted this um, Mars Mech Rover thingy. Right? I'm not sure how he achieved the texture for the ground, but it seems pretty realistic. Although I would have expected him to go for a longitudinal, kind of cinematic kind of view, but it works, you know? Now you can tell this zebra is dead as fuck. Um, he did blur it. I'm not sure what killed- oh shit, he killed this zebra. And it's a very very big kind of zebra. Um, he does pull the anatomy a bit, just a bit, um, but I do love that sense of movement, right? And I like how he splits this composition. You can see this ye light yellow part here in light. There's a bit of this brown, brown, brown ground. God. <laughs> so there is this kind of um, delegation of spacing when it comes to the whole frame, right? Ooh, delegation of spacing, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, I can see a truck in the background. Um, I'm not sure how a gun like this would be able to kill like a zebra of this um, stature, right? I believe this is based off of a, a Zek kind of story or nightmare. <laughs> but I love the, the lighting. This could actually be some kind of book cover, right? I mean, it's a pretty interesting concept. Um, it does pull you in, makes you ask questions, and you can see a bit of that fear, right? So this guy is actually holding something, a cup of coffee maybe? And these folks right here are fucked, cause, you know, yeah. I believe this is based off of Dumbo, just because of the wings. Dumb research. And, um, he added satellite thingies. <laughs> in the ears of Dumbo, and he actually mixed the horns with the skin, so that's pretty interesting. Um, again, the, the, the subject matter he paints is pretty out there, um, but the way he paints, it's pretty realistic, so it's a kind of a nice combination to see. Um, this one reminds me of an Asian, not a, was it a Japanese or Korean film where there was this radioactive creature. 
uh, I'm not sure what the film was called, but it's a pretty old film. Um, but yeah. Ooh. Um, it's kind of very, very similar, I guess, to Dumbo as well, or this kind of dumb research piece. Just because of the greens and, of course, the way it's rendered very, very highly realistic. So they're obviously underwater. This could be like a giant octopus. Um, it is a giant octopus. Um, in terms of the subject matter, it's not too out there. It kind of makes sense, right? You've got an NYPD cop that's kind of ape-like, very, very fat. Well, it's kind of realistic, actually. <laughs> but you can see a bit of chaos happening in the background. Um, now this one, this one's a bit rougher, right? In terms of, the, I see a lot of textures here. I see a lot of dashy kinds of strokes. Not very common in his typical work, but in terms of the subject matter, the messaging, it's very, very... Sergei Kolesov. Kolesov? Kolesov. So this is the last piece we're going to review. Um, I do like how he did not render this um, figure here that much. He focused more on this kind of crab-like insect thing. But um, again, you can see the, the skill that's there, right? Oh, he's being shot at by something in this side. Um, I'm not sure how this guy can defeat this guy with this pitchfork thingy. <laughs> but I like the way it's rendered. It's very, very real, re uh, realistic. It's all, I, I, to me, if... Because it looks... To me, it feels like it was done in 3D, maybe. At least in this part, because it's so highly rendered. Uh, if he wanted to, he could have rendered everything else as well. And kind of equalize the... Uh, the amount of detail but then again when it comes to 2d art it doesn't help if you render everything equally you have to focus on a certain part and spend most of your rendering time on that specific part just because it's it's, it's an easy way to kind of guide the eye anyway because if everything is kind of equally done or rendered your eye won't be able to focus anywhere you know the shot of the frame helps the composition helps uh, in terms of the focus but also the way it's rendered, you know? For example, the back of the legs are just silhouettes, essentially, right? Um, and then you can see this kind of sharp um, change in terms of the amount of rendering done. Even this part of the wing or leg, right? It's pretty silhouette -y. And then obviously this part, the front part, is where it gets amazing, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video, this art review of... Uh, Sergei Kolesov's um, artwork. I do recommend you follow him on Instagram. Check him out on his Patreon. Um, obviously, follow him on or, uh, on his art station and check out his YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.